good evening, Kairos. Stand up and worship together. My name is Matt, and I know I say this every time I speak, but I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I think it's so cool that we get to gather in a place and just simply be expecting of what God's going to do in this room. And I don't know why you're here tonight. I don't know 
what each and every one of you have brought into this room, whatever kind of baggage that may be, whether it's maybe a goal or a resolution that fell through this week, or maybe it's that habit that you told yourself you weren't gonna bring into 2019, and, and this week was the week that you fell back into that habit. Or maybe you're like me, and your brain uh, woke you up at 5.30 a.m. yesterday just to have a small uh, existential crisis about what you're gonna do with your life, and just there's little things that happen, and here's what I want to reiterate tonight, is I believe that, that each and every person in this room is right where they are in their life for a reason. And before I go on, I, one of my resolutions this year was, was to stop speaking Christianese. And if you don't know what that is, it's just saying things that, that sound Christian and sound right if you're a Christian. And so I don't tell you that everybody's here for a purpose um, just so that you feel good and leave this place feeling good. I tell you that because it's something personal to me that I have to tell myself every three hours or so. And uh, you know, last year, um, and actually my entire life, there are three moments um, where I can pinpoint where God has spoken to me. And I believe that he's, he's spoken to me in different ways, but these are, are three tangible times where I actually felt like I had words. And it's just a fun fact, two of those three times were uh, alone in the bubble bath. So it's probably way too much information, but it's the most sacred place in my home. And I encourage you to find a sacred place in your home and pray there. But that's way too much and probably inappropriate. But um, I was going somewhere. The words that, that God spoke to me, um, he simply gave me this sentence and he said, stop worrying so much about the progress and just trust me in the process. And I wanna speak that over you guys tonight, not, not to encourage apathy or to di dismiss progress. I say that to you because I think in our humanity, we focus so much on what we aren't, what we haven't accomplished, who we haven't become yet. And we forget just to rest and wait and sit in this moment and think about what is God doing right here and right now? Because all that pain, that shame, that guilt, whatever you brought into this room is a gift in some form or another. And I think sometimes we just have to work hard to see that. I heard this, I uh, actually saw this quote yesterday on Facebook and it, it was from a pastor. And he says, the enemy will want you to define yourself by your scars, but Jesus will want you to define yourself by his. So that being said, I just wanna reiterate that we are children of God because of that. And that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but to me, it means that I'm a child of a God who, who doesn't ask for my perfection. He just simply, he simply wants me to understand that a perfect son died for that imperfection in me. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna read this scripture over us tonight and we're just gonna continue to sing in light of that truth tonight. So I'm gonna open up to Galatians uh, chapter four, starting at verse four. It says, but when the time arrived that was set by God the Father, God sent his son, born among us of a woman, born under the conditions of the law so that he might redeem those of us who have been kidnapped by the law. Thus we have been set free to experience our rightful heritage. You can tell for sure that you are now fully adopted as his own children because God sent the spirit of his son into our lives, crying out, Papa, Father. Doesn't that privilege of intimate conversation with God make it plain that you are not a slave, but a child? And if you are a child, you are also an heir with complete access to the inheritance. I'll say the word of the Lord if you say thanks be to God. The word of the Lord. Let's continue to worship tonight.
Say the first part if you say the last. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good evening, Kairos. We're so glad that you're here. I'd love to read our scripture tonight from Philippians chapter 3. We are continuing in our series called The Pattern. As Paul lays out, what are healthy patterns and paths as we seek uh, to follow Christ on this journey together. So last week, if you were with us, we'll, we were reminded that the gospel is not earned and that Paul said his religious resume was rubbish compared to knowing Christ and him alone. And so tonight we're gonna be reminded that it is indeed the process over our perfection that Christ seeks as we follow him together. We're gonna pick up tonight in Philippians chapter three, verse 12, but before we do that, I invite you to pray with me. Holy Spirit, would you give us eyes to see and ears to hear? Jesus, our good shepherd, would you go before us in this text and make a way? And together we say, We pick up in Philippians chapter three, verses 12 to 14. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on, on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I'll say this is the word of the Lord if you'll say thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, be to God. thanks Jacoby. I'll say bless the Lord if you'll say, oh my soul, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Bless his holy name. Good evening, Kairos. Hey, I'm Chris, I'm the pastor here. Um, if you're new with us or renewing to us, Welcome back, where it's good to see you. Um, if you wanna make friends and meet new people and get connected, we'd love to be a part of that. There's an info bar right outside these doors. Stop by, come say hi to us, introduce yourself. We'd love to get to know you um, and hear your story. But full disclosure, if you're gonna take any step closer to us in this ministry and me as a pastor, spoiler alert, we're not perfect. Far from it. We're just in process of trying to pattern our lives after Jesus, and when we do that, we expect supernatural things to happen. 
Um, something supernatural happened in my life yesterday. My wife came home after being gone overseas for about six, seven, 10, 24 days. Can't really keep track. It was far too long for my capabilities and capacities. Um, I have plenty of help, so don't let me play the martyr, but secretly I want to. We are now currently at DEF CON 4 and all is starting to settle back into our normal patterns. One of our patterns in the Brooks household, if you were to come uh, to our house in the evening, is bedtime routine. About 30 minutes before kids are supposed to be in bed or asleep, we make them get in bed and they read for 30 minutes. Um, and so this is not just because we really think literacy is awesome, it's just I need some freaking peace and quiet, okay? It's ridiculous. And so it works well for our three older ones who can read, but our youngest one, Christopher, he's five, he still can't read yet, so he requires a little bit more time and attention during this moment in the evening. Um, now, I have to confess to you, before you think I'm like father of the year, I'm not. Um, I'm running for it, but I have some political skeletons in my closet. Here, here's the way that I cheat the system. Sometimes I'll get his older sister, who's practicing reading, to read to him but he's not too interested in Junie B. Jones, so that doesn't often work. Then sometimes I'll start reading a book and because I know he can't read, I'll skip lines to make it go quicker <laughs> and just kind of start flipping like, yeah. Sometimes I get so lazy, I'll go, hey, where's this in this picture? Great, and we'll just go through it and skip all the words together. Sometimes there's some days where I start reading to him and I fall asleep first. Uh, that's embarrassing. Um, and then uh, there are also other times when I said, hey, buddy, let's just forgo the story tonight and daddy will make one up. Awesome. He'll grab me like Batman and Superman. I try to think it's because I'm creative. Secretly, it's because I can control how fast the story goes. <laughs> Superman fights Batman. Superman wins. The end. Good night. Daddy loves you. Jesus loves you. So do I. You know, and we get on with it. But I brought, this is actually my son's book basket, I guess you would call it, in his room. And I usually let him go pick it out. So... This is Christopher's favorite playlist right now. We got Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, by the way, one of the reasons I love reading to him is this was a pattern that was put down in my life by my grandmother. Grandma Brooks, who had a voice like red velvet cake, read to me Tom and Jerry out of the golden books. Do you remember the old little golden books with the foil on the side? I think they still make them. Like right now, I, I feel so loved just looking at, that was the actual book she read me. Like uh, it's marker of my childhood. So I'm curious which one of these will sear its way into his childhood, right? Will it be Jesus' storybook Bible? Will it be this dumb cars book where they're just trying to make more money? Um, giving tree, let's hope for that one. Llama Llama Red Pajama. I love that one, man. It just, it makes me feel like Chance the Rapper sometimes. It just, <laughs> hate these. You know these ones where they press it and it just makes noise because then he actually follows along and knows where I'm reading. <laughs> Dr. Seuss, places you'll go. Cool when you're older, a little bit too trippy when you're a kid, like, oh, those creatures are scaring me, daddy. <laughs> Great adoption book, why is mama bear's fur a different color than baby bear's? Cry every time I read it. Little engine that could. S went surfing, this is from his Uncle D, he went to Hawaii and only brought him back this book. <laughs> My favorite, Velveteen Rabbit. But recently, he's going for this thing. Now, I don't know who got us this, and thank you, I guess I, guess I could read who got it for us. Uncle D again, okay, so. <laughs> I think he just picks it because it's the biggest. And it's got all the classic fairy tales, I guess because there's not copyright laws on there and so when someone else is gonna repackage them and charge you a lot of money for it. But, you know, um, three little pigs, you know, three bears, Jack and the Beanstalk. But every time we page through this, and he did this last night as well, he wants to read the tortoise and the hare. I've read it no less than 35 times and I'm so sick of it. It's so ingrained in my memory. It took like the 13th time for Christopher to realize that hare is another name for rabbit. <laughs> so I'll give you the loose translation. You know this, it's about the turtle and the rabbit, okay? You remember this story, right? You got the swift, fast, talented, cocky rabbit who challenges the slow, methodical, pitiful turtle to a race in your epic David and Goliath story. And what happens? At the end, slow, and methodical wins the race. Why do I bring that up? 
Uh, if the research is correct, we are on January 15th, and 50% of you in here have made New Year's goals and resolutions. If the research is also correct, 50% of that 50% has already failed towards that goal, which is giving the other 50% who didn't make goals saying, I told you so, that's why I don't do it. I don't wanna feel like a failure. Great, awesome. So technically 75% of us have made no tangible advancements towards New Year's goals or resolutions. Fair enough. And here's what I want you to realize, that even if you came out of the gate strong, swift, with rabbit-like intensity, only to find that old habits and underlying patterns continue to sideline your best efforts, there is hope in the gospel. And simply tonight, I want us to stop trying, putting so much effort into perfection and start to embrace being perfected in Christ's love. That's the process. Instead of after perfection, we're after the process of being perfected in Christ's love. So Jacoby read our text for us tonight, and I appreciate her grounding us in scripture. And just so we're clear, by the way, the series that we're in, this is not a series about goals, it's a series about the gospel. This is not a series where we're trying to say, hey, it's all about self-improvement. We're trying to say it's about scripture and self-sacrifice so that we can become more Christ-like for the sake of others. And if you're new with us, just if you wanna get the flavor of us, we're not the kind of place that sprinkles some Jesus sea salt on top of a flaming souffle of if you just try hard enough, you can accomplish anything you want to, not us. We are the kind of place that says Christ accomplished everything for us on the cross. Therefore, we have given him a divine right into our lives to accomplish anything in and through us he so desires. So that's what we're after in the series patterns, paths that help or hurt. We wanna saturate and marinate in scripture. We wanna go through the book of Philippians, every single sentence and syllable at a time so that it gets deep in our bones and all of a sudden is ingrained in our patterns and our habits and the way that we're even thinking about ourselves and about God. And the trouble is, as we move forward, there's gonna be times when a lot of you feel swift and strong and brave and confident in your relationship with God and what he's calling you to do. And then there are gonna be times when it feels slow and methodical and it's confusing and you don't feel strong and it feels like everyone else is passing you by and you're a million miles away from where you wanted to be. In both of those moments, we need to cling to the verse that Jacoby read tonight. But I press on, forgetting what is behind straining towards what is ahead, I press on and upward for the prize that Christ has called me heavenward. So that's the context uh, and the text of what we're talking about. Last week, we talked about getting rid of trying hard and replacing it with training. Tonight, we're gonna try to speak to our perfectionists in the room and get them to embrace the process. Why is this important to me? This is important to me because as a pastor and as a friend, I am sick and tired of seeing so many people riddled with perfectionistic tendencies that produces unhealthy levels of anxiety and depression in their life that is compressing the very freedom and authority that Christ died to set you free to experience. He has accomplished that, and some of us need to live right in the middle of the chaos and the mess of our sanctification of our lives, our families, and be content with the fact that some days I just put one foot in front of the other, and that in and of itself may be a miracle. And so Paul says he presses on, not forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is forward. And you'll remember last week, this comes on the coattails of, he just listed his religious resume of perfectionism. And we talked about the fact that that got poisoned with pride and arrogance and self-righteousness in such a way that he thought it merited God's approval. And so to loosely translate the Greek when he thinks back on that stuff, he basically says, eh, yuck, or eesh, when he thinks about that. And so now he wants to talk about his freedom in Christ and how he moves forward. And what is shocking is what comes right after that, I did not expect to see it coming. Paul doesn't stop running because he spent so much of his life running in the wrong direction. 
Paul doesn't decide to take a quick nap on the road to righteousness and resurrection just because he's far ahead and outpacing most of us in this room, that he's already done more than you and I will ever accomplish. He doesn't think that deserves or merits him a break. And he also doesn't think that he's disqualified from running the race because of his past sins and transgressions and persecutions against the church. In fact, he does just the opposite. I press on, forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize. Can I read you a quote that was just absolutely amazing? Fred Craddock says this about Paul in this text. Trust in God's grace did not make Paul less active, but rather set him free to run without watching his feet, without counting his steps, and without competing with other servants of Christ. His goal was clear to be with Christ in his resurrection. To that end, he can seek because he's been found. He can know because he's been known and he can apprehend because he has been apprehended. Don't you want that kind of freedom? Don't you want the grace of Jesus Christ to course through you in such a way that you make every effort, not because you're seeking someone's approval, but because you already have it in Christ Jesus? This is the opposite of the rabbit's mentality in the race. His key problem was he forgot what was ahead of him, just remembered what was behind him, a slowly plodding little turtle that was no threat at all. So he just figured, why even bother? And I got a feeling in the room tonight, there's a lot of us Christians who we've got that rabbit type mentality. We've forgotten what we've been called to. We forgot there's redemption and resurrection and Jesus is returning and he's calling us to be active agents of redemption. Instead, we just kind of look behind us and we go, oh, look how far I've come. I think I can go ahead and take a nap. As long as I'm better than most, as long as my morality or my talents or my giftedness outstrips and outpaces other people, I've got plenty of time. As long as the gifts that I've given because of where I was born or what I've done or somehow the situation I find myself in, as long as I'm better than most people, then let's just take a break. I've totally forgotten the goal that I'm going for. I'm just making sure that I'm better than most. I think the problem with that is once we get there, we're lazy and lethargic because some of you are naturally talented and gifted in certain areas. And your confidence is not in Christ. Your confidence is in the talents and gifts that you have and you become conceited about them and think that entitles you to certain things. Your gifts are no longer in service to the king, they're in service to yourself and you use them for your own end and your own desires. And you're asleep on the side of the road. Or perhaps some of you in here, you can't take your eyes on what's behind you and you've forgotten what's in front of you. And no matter how hard you run, how hard you try, no matter how many races you win, you can't shake your past. You're constantly reliving unhealthy patterns because you've never fully dealt with the pain that happened in that past. And you're just recreating and reliving those situations everywhere you go. And when it comes time to deal with it, you bounce to a new relationship, new job, or new city, and only to relive all those same things over again. But maybe, just maybe, Maybe there's some heroes in the faith here tonight who are turtle-like Christians who crawl out of bed every morning and by some gospel miracle and faith in Jesus Christ, you just put one foot in front of the other and you plod through boredom, obstacles, adversity, confusion, and doubt and say, if Jesus Christ is alive, I can make it one more day in his freedom and his assurance. He is my rock and my salvation. He's a mighty fortress. I shall not be shaken. Those that wait upon the Lord will be renewed like strength with wings on the eagles. Lord, if you are real, I am going to continue. Even though progress is hard to see at this moment, I submit myself to the process of your loving sanctification in my life. You're the heroes in the kingdom of God. And I salute you. And I think we need more turtles and less rabbits and less people trying to be goats, the greatest of all time. Maybe we just need people who day in and day out miraculously do the mundane things to the glory of God, knowing that he is in the process of perfecting them to accomplish his purposes. I press on to take hold of that which has taken hold of me 
Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what ahead, I press on to goal to win the prize. Now, can I confess to you, I love this text, but there's something that doesn't sit right with me. Did, it, did you guys catch it? Like, I, I've been on this text for about three weeks, and it went down smooth, but then all of a sudden, my stomach started rumbling. I'm like, wait, what a second? Like, you're like, yeah, wait, what? Paul says, forget what's behind and strange towards what is ahead. Are we okay, are we friends enough that I can have an honest dialogue with scripture? Does that sit right with you? Forget what's behind? Oh, don't worry about that. Do you think Paul's advocating, repressing, forgetting, dismissing some of the pain of the past, not learning from what it is that you've done, that you're ashamed of? Do you think Paul's going here, hey, church, let's just put a big, huge coat of primer of denial and say, oh, I just don't wanna talk about those things. I think that's what Paul's after? Because we could take that verse out of context and use it to justify that, couldn't we? Here's what I would submit to you is my interpretation of Paul and what he means right here, and I'll back it up with two scriptures. One, I don't think he means fully forget what has happened in the past. How do I justify that? Because verses five through six, he hasn't forgotten his past. He just listed it out for us. Here's exactly what I've done in my past. You can flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter six, and he's writing to his church there. And he lists out a bunch of sin and sinners that are happening in the culture around them. And then he says to them, as were some of you. What is he doing? He's remembering their past. Only to say, Now press on. Now you have been cleansed. Now you have been made holy. And now you are being washed in the water of his word. And because you called on the name of Jesus Christ, you have been forgiven. So here's what I humbly submit to you. I say when Paul says forgetting, I don't think that we don't remember them anymore. I think what we do is we give them access to the forgiveness of God so that God can forgive our past and we can forgive ourselves and press on into our new identity. And when those things pop up, you go, yeah, that's not who I am anymore. And I'm living a different way. I got new patterns of living and my past does not define me, Jesus does. And I can't wait to see what he has in for my future and I don't wanna miss out on one single second of it. Um, Got a new book I wanna start reading to Christopher that I just got. Can I share it with you guys first? It's called Wilma Unlimited and it is based off the true story of Wilma Rudolph who if you know about her, she is actually from 50 miles up the road in Clarksville, Tennessee. She was born in 1950. And this is an award-winning children's book based off of her life. And it talks about how she grew up in a large black family. She had 19 brothers and sisters. And she was a skinny little girl and sickly. And apparently every time someone got sick in her family, she got it and got doubly sick. By the time she was five, she had contracted polio and went to the only doctor in town that would see black patients for that diagnosis. Unfortunately, after that, they couldn't treat her and she became crippled in her left leg. So her parents drove her 50 miles to Nashville and rode on the back of the bus where the blacks had to sit so that they could get treatment twice a week for her polio. She then got her brace there that enabled her to hobble along, but once the school found out she couldn't walk, they didn't allow her to attend school. Finally, when she was able to carry herself enough around classes, when she got there, she was made fun of, and she was bullied, and she was ostracized. And then in this award-winning children's book, as they talk about the illustrations, they talk about the day she went to church with her family and took her brakes off and hobbled down the center aisle and threw it down on the altar and put her hands out and began to pray and sing and feel the love of God and decided then and there, no matter how much progress she made, she was committed to the process of rehabilitating her leg, whether she walked again or not. I'll go ahead and spoil the end for you. By the age of 14, 
She's on a basketball team that goes to the state championship. And you would think this is where the moment they lose. But in the audience is a track coach from the university nearby, and he recruits her to her track team. By the age of 16, she's the youngest female on the track team in the Olympic Games. And she takes home the bronze. By the time she is 20, she is the fastest woman in the world taking home three gold medals at the Olympics. Now we may not all win gold medals in the Olympics, but I firmly believe in the body of Christ that there's something that's crippling you right now, that God wants you in the process of healing right now so that he can release his kingdom power in and through you. And I also believe what Isaiah 40 says, those that wait upon the Lord and hope upon the Lord will have their strength renewed. We will soar like the wings on an eagle. We will run and not grow weary. And we will walk and not grow faint. Amen? Amen. So the band's gonna come up and we're gonna take 120 seconds. These are just moments where we just wanna listen in to what the Lord's pressing in on us. And if you've already got something that the Lord's stirring on you, I'd encourage you to write it down. Take out your notes section on your phone. And just write, I think God is saying, and capture it. And this is the moment we do this for. We want you to hear from the Lord. We want you to experience him. So just think, is there anything, what do I think God's saying to me, and what do I need to do about it? If that's a, new muscle for you to stretch. One of the uh, reflection questions I would give you as you're trying to listen in is, are you relying on perfection right now in your life or are you relying on the person of Christ? What areas do you rely more on your ability to be perfect and less on the ability of Christ to be the person who perfects you? in your life right now or are you having trouble walking? Where do you feel slow and sluggish, discouraged and disheartened? Maybe take that to the Lord. And what would it take for Christ to help you take one more step? Maybe the last question, you have time to consider. Where have your talents or gifts made you lazy? Where are you lethargic just because you're good at that, you don't have to put any effort into it anymore and you're not honoring Christ at all? What would it take for you to, to get back in the race? Let's listen together.
Perfection is all about pride. Process is all about humility. May you remember that perfection is about how you see me. Process is about how God sees me. Perfection is about me trying to win God's approval and process is too busy already walking in it. So may we press on, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We're gonna sing the doxology just a quick second. Just a couple reminders, we'd love to pray for you. There's prayer tags in the back. We'll have prayer counselors up front. Also, there's an info bar out back. Come say hi to us. And if you wanna get connected, you can just text 43506. Text Kairos to that number that I just said right and read off the screen. Let's sing the doxology <laughs> together. I got so nervous. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. Love and serve the Lord. You're dismissed. Where are you now when darkness?